The only source of reliable information and instruction about the things of God and the way of salvation is the Bible. And its history, that is, how we came by it, is very helpful and interesting to know. The following video will help you see why we have 66 books in our Bible, made up of 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 books in the New Testament. Why are there only 66 books in the Bible? Well, let's start with the Old Testament. Why were the Apocrypha not included in the Old Testament? Melito of Sardis, around 170 AD, gives a list of Hebrew books which includes all of the 22 but Esther. Please note that these 22 books are the same as our 39 books of the Old Testament, but the Jews simply ordered them differently. This testimony continues through Christian history over the next few centuries. Origen declares that the Jewish canon was only 22 books. Athanasius, who had some teachers who were Jewish, also declares that there should be only 22 books in the Old Testament, as did Hilary and Cyril of Jerusalem. Jerome, the same Jerome who translated the Latin Vulgate, shared the same view. In fact, Jerome coined the term Apocrypha, meaning hidden, to denote that these books were not inspired. Although the Apocrypha were included in the Septuagint Greek translation of the Old Testament, this was in a things-to-be-read section, clearly distinguished from the canonical books, in much the same way as it was originally included for historical purposes in certain Reformation Bibles, such as the authorised King James Version of 1611. Other early church writers do not quote from the Apocrypha as God's word. Both believing and unbelieving Jews of Christ's day rejected the Apocrypha. Philo and Josephus of the first century did not regard it, and the Jewish council of Jamnia in 90 AD rejected it. And so, as the Lord never contended with the Jews about the matter of rejecting certain books, we have no reason to assume they were wrong. The Jews unanimously understood that the prophets had ceased before the Apocrypha were written, as the Apocrypha itself admits in 1 Maccabees. In the inspired scriptures themselves, the Apostles and the Lord Jesus do not quote from the Apocrypha. If at all, there are only allusions to it. Whereas there are numerous instances where the Old Testament is quoted, and this is typically denoted by a statement such as, It is written. The gross errors of these books are apparent also. Second Maccabees teaches that you can tithe to pay for the sins of the dead. This somehow accounting for the fact that elsewhere Jeremiah is praying for the Jews, even though he is dead. Tobit too teaches that almsgiving pays for sins, as well as the use of witchcraft to cast out demons. And apparently you can divorce your wife if she disobeys you. Not to mention the many historical errors in each of these apocryphal books. Now let's look at the New Testament. It is a hugely popular misconception today, not just in the unlearned junk pop culture of the West today, but also with certain liberal Bible scholars and Muslim apologists who should know better, that Constantine, at the Council of Nicaea, ordered that all writings which do not include the deity of Christ should be removed from the Bible, thus brainwashing people into believing the deity of Christ. This is historically ridiculous, as we not only have Christian writings from the first century onwards, a considerable amount of time before Nicaea, but we have fairly detailed records of the proceedings at Nicaea itself. Christians had believed in Christ's deity from the beginning, and Nicaea was only a council to discuss the heresy of Arianism. Arianism decided Jesus was a somewhat lesser god and the council completely rejected it. They said that they liked the Lord Jesus Christ and Christianity just the way it was. So let's have a look at some of these texts, which many declare were conspiratorially kept from the Bible. In the Infancy Gospel of Thomas, Jesus kills his schoolmates and causes so much trouble that Joseph insists Mary should not let him out of the house. 
in the Arabic infancy gospel of the 5th or 6th century, Jesus turns his school friends into goats to have them skip around him. And the most ridiculous of all, in the Acts of Paul, Paul is about to be fed to a lion in an Ephesian amphitheatre, but don't worry, because Paul reminds the lion that he baptised him. After the lion had given his confession of faith, of course. And so the lion helps Paul to escape. I do not think I am exaggerating in describing this material as retarded in various ways. Quite simply, the three criteria used by the early church to determine ca uh, canonical scripture were apostolicity, catholicity, and orthodoxy. Was this written by an apostle or by the apostle's authority? Was it widely used in the congregations established by the apostles? And did its teachings agree with the doctrines taught by the apostles? From the first century, we see Christians quoting explicitly from these texts which we would identify as our New Testament today. By the fourth century, Eusebius and Athanasius declared the 27 books of the New Testament. It was only in response to heretics such as Marcion that Christians felt prompted to write an actual list of the books they should use in worship services. But books like the Gospels of Thomas, Mary, Peter, Philip, Matthias and the Egyptians, the Infancy Gospels and the Acts of Paul, Andrew and John etc. would never have been considered scripture. They lacked any apostolic authority written much later, sometimes centuries later, with a dishonest pseudonym. They were not accepted amongst the churches, with the early churches openly condemning them in their writings. And the reason for this was they were predominantly Gnostic in content, their doctrines having a clear agenda and bearing no resemblance to the doctrines of the established New Testament writings. So, did God give us 66 books in our Bible in some flashy way? Was a scroll delivered to the Apostle John with the names of each book written on it? No. But the fact that the canon is so very evident and has survived such horrendous and varied onslaughts for thousands of years shows the ever-mighty and sure hand.